Well, hello everybody out there. This is uh, Justin Levitt here with uh, Vermont Diggers Association of Metal Detectorists, um, otherwise known as BTT, BTD AOMD. So anyway, I'm here in a, uh, a local site in uh, central Vermont, and I'm going to be metal detecting on a site that I haven't been able to metal detect um, all fall because it's a soccer field and they've been in season so I've got permission to be here um, on this site which I've been hunting for half the summer or so and uh, under the condition that I didn't hunt on their soccer field while they were in season so really the only place that I haven't thoroughly hunted yet that I really want to is the soccer field itself because I found a, a 10k ring on one side of the soccer field um, I'd say just as just at the beginning of fall and that was pretty cool. I got a little story that goes with that. And uh, it was on the edge of the soccer field, like towards the woods. So I didn't actually, I uh, wasn't on the soccer field itself, on the actual playing grounds. I was off to the edge of the property. So along the short of it was I found a 10K ring, and I will show you a picture of it, probably right here. And uh, located the guy who um, who had it, or the, who lost it, and he told me that he didn't want it. So I was like, really? Um, okay. Now I'm an extreme believer in keeping um, everything that I find uh, for longevity and you know just whatever. But it was a 10k ring, and it was um, embossed with someone else's name on it, and I had absolutely no personal attachment to it whatever and it was a class ring so it was very heavy so I decided to take the one item out of everything that I didn't really want um, or care to keep um, which is probably at this point the most valuable thing I've ever found and just cash it in for weight so that I could pay off one of my detectors so that's exactly what I did and my wife and family greatly appreciate that and thank you sir for allowing me to keep the ring and do that I appreciate it you know who you are and uh, he had already collected insurance on it, I guess, and uh, he said that he didn't feel right about taking it, knowing that he had already gotten a brand new one from it, and since I found it, it was all mine. Alright, cool. So, basically, both of my ACE um, detectors are now officially paid off um, from what I do, so that's cool, but, you know, you know, we don't like to cash stuff in, but if we can actually pay for our hobby with the hobby, then that's absolutely the way to go. Uh, parents of children out there will understand what I'm talking about. So anyway, I just want to give you a quick video and show you on some of my gear, what I use. And uh, I actually want to do a customer or a, a product review on something that I've been using or that I'm about to start using um, that my friend Sheila gave me. Um, sent me. We had a uh, situation where we bartered gifts and uh, she sent me this and it worked out really well for her and it's hopefully going to work out really well for me. It looks like it. So, Alright, so anyway, here's my AT Pro. I've got it set up with a hood right here just to keep a little bit of the sunlight off of it. Everything is standard on it. Nothing's too special except for the fact that I took the original plug and I wired it to a piece of speaker wire and went through the detector back up through the armature and out the back so now I am set up with a plug in the rear because I really really like these headphones they're the ones that come with the 350 the clear sound easy sew away um, Garrett phones they've got a great sound they work real good they're very lightweight and I'm very fond of them. So I wanted to adapt to a, a well, I guess it'd be a, a quarter inch jack, but I didn't want to do any damage to my machine. So I didn't hardwire it to the board itself, just to the plug here, and ran my wire up through and out the back. And one little dropper super glued to the plug, and we're good to go. So the cool thing is that if it ever breaks or needs to be repaired, then I can just put a little bit of acetone on the rim that'll eat through the super glue and it'll come right out. So that's my rig right there. Now I'm officially set up with this shovel that I made. And what I've got here is just an old <coughs> basic small spade garden shovel. And I rigged up with a, that's actually a wooden shaft right there, an oak shaft that I made for it so it's stronger. Still got the plastic handle on it till it breaks, but it's done me good so far. I've got my pro pointer and my digger right there hanging on it so that I don't have to carry them on my person 
and uh, they're just handy right there. And then I've got a camera mount right there on the side of my shovel. So all I do is hold on to my shovel like this and my camera can sit right there and just point out at the day like that. So I can use it as a tripod. So that's that. Now you probably noticed my thumb. Yeah, that's a funny story too. I am the victim of a, I guess we could call it a, uh, a crazy pumpkin carving freak accident. So I was uh, shaving a pumpkin for my son and I was using actually this buck knife that I carry with me right here, the old Winchester. And I wonderfully skipped off the pumpkin and sliced myself pretty good. But it was like a college reunion because I used to work for the fire department and uh, I got to see the three guys that I loved the most that I worked on shift with over there. So we got to yuck it up for a while and I got to see their new ambulance. Yay! And uh, ER until about 2 in the morning, but it was worth it. Bled like crazy because um, I cut right through that vein, I guess, on the side. But we got it figured out, we got it stitched up, took four stitches, and uh, long story short, I'm still here. I haven't been able to detect for a week because it's been hurting, but today it's just under 40 degrees, and uh, it doesn't hurt anymore, and I'm getting my stitches out on Thursday, and so the ground's going to freeze pretty quick up here, probably in the next couple of weeks, so this might be my last gallivant. So... All right, so that's what I use, and that's my couple of short stories for you. Now on to product review. Shelia, or Sheila, I'm not sure, because her name is spelled Shelia, S-H-E-L-I-A, um, but I think it's Sheila. I don't know, she'll correct me, I'm sure. So anyway, she makes these things that she calls beeping bags, and I'll tell you what, Honestly, I was a little skeptical when I first saw them. I was like, well, those are kind of cool, but I don't know. I'd probably never order one because I just prefer the bags that I use and so on and so forth. And I don't know. I was horribly wrong. Let's put it that way because she sent it to me. And I'll tell you what, this thing is freaking awesome. So what do we got here is what she calls a beeping bag. It's got a little strap here for your... Uh, for your belt and it hangs just low enough so it's below your jacket which is cool it is very well built very well stitched handcrafted right here in Vermont and uh, this is actually got um, a real tree camo design so um, she gets the cloth and stitches them out and it works pretty good now the cool feature about this thing is that well here you know what I'm just gonna set my camera down because my thumb isn't working all right, can you see me now? The cool thing about this is that it's got a snapshot top. So what you do is you open the top, put your stuff in there, and then it snaps shut. That's awesome. That's really cool because you don't have to fumble with buttons or anything like that. And the cool thing about it is that it's got this little loop on the front right here. So if you wanted to, you could actually put a, a string or something through there to hold it shut. But why would you need to? Because this thing is like almost break your finger kind of fast. I love it. Thing's awesome. It goes right on your belt and it hangs below your coat, which is wicked cool. And if you look at the quality of the stitching, it's just incredibly well stitched with the corners crossed in like that to give it durability in the corner so they don't wear out. And it's uh, stitched up top, both sides, and it's a really thick mill cloth, really, really hefty and very heavy, heavy thread. So this thing is awesome. And this is going to be the first time I use it today. And we're going to give her a customer review, an honest review, and I'll tell you exactly what I think about it and how I like it or if I like it or if I don't. But I got a feeling it's going to be a positive one because I don't see any reason why this thing would be a problem. All right, so we got this going on. We got this stuff going on. We got this field right here that we're going to attack. It's new ground that I've never been on before that I found good solid stuff here. Um, on the edge of it before so we're gonna go for it. All right, and I'll keep you updated as to what's going on All right All right, so we got a live dig here uh, about four inches down. I just got an 81 And it was dead on 81 so A detector's telling me it's in here. So this is a live dig. We're gonna see what we got
Now, this is a wreck field that has been for a long time, since like the 70s. But also keep in mind that this is an old farm here too, so... This could really be anything. Alright, so we are... This is interesting being one hand down, so... I'm gonna go with a shovel here. I can't use my hand that much because... Of obvious reasons. It's a dial. You see the imprint on the ground? And here's the coin itself. One dime, and in the sunlight it says... Oops, it's working with one hand here. 1986, I think. Yay! Alright, so here's my sweet little beeping bag. Check this out. Now I just put this in here, drop it in, and she closes. Beautiful. All right, so we're gonna cover this old hole up here. Every life has a reason, but still we believe that every change in season will somehow set us free. They can just deliver what was meant for me. Uh, my dying wish someday, when uh, God finally decides to take me, is to fall to my knees, put my hands together, stare up to him in his beautiful bright face, and just pray to him that he would allow rings, gold rings, not to be in the same range as pull tabs. Please, for the love of God. Bouncy signal. But uh, it seemed like it could have been a bullet or something, so I dug it just to see what it was. It was pretty deep, six inches down, and it's a lead button. See that? It's got the little clasp on the back, and it looks like lead. It rang up as lead, so I'm assuming that's a lead button. Cool, so that's old farm stuff. All right, awesome. All right, put it in my beeping bag, and we're on to the next find solid 87 it's not moving off 87 at all nice high tone could be a quarter but it's kind of a low number for a quarter so they're usually a little lower um but we're gonna see what we got it's right on the surface by my pro pointer here see that it's not deep at all so it's definitely a new drop we're gonna find it Seven. That's a good number, and it's not even moving, which is pretty crazy. All right, here we go. That's a quarter. Yeah, it's a new one. It is a new one. 99 Connecticut. It's a Connecticut. Connecticut uh, Copper Center. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, cool. Whatever. It's going in the beeping bag. Yep. Back of my mind, I thought that was a quarter, but I don't know, because usually quarters ring in between uh, 85, 86, 84, you know. Um, never up near 90, and that was 87, and it wasn't moving, so darn, that could have been good. But that's all right. Better than a penny. Either that or it's a piece of buckshot, but I think it's a pistol round right there, like a 30 caliber or something. But that's pretty cool. That's old, man. That's real old. I'm happy with that. That's cool. And I found a 50 caliber bullet over on the other side um, about five minutes ago, but it was a modern round. So we're finding some cool stuff. Keep on moving. I'm up in my hole here and I found a pair of silver slippers check that out a charm bracelet that's pretty cool a set of silver slippers i'm going to scan the hole and see if there's anything else in there maybe the whole thing's in there but i thought that was pretty neat they're awful heavy so have to 
clean them up before I find out if they're really silver, but pretty cool, man. Let's see what else is in there. Well, I'll tell you what, today is a good day, and uh, it's been awesome to come out here. I've been dealing with a lot of stress at work, and this is just a really, really, really great thing for me to do to uh, let my brain defuse. Um, and I just found something awesome. So let me show you. Check it out. What does that look like to you, y'all? It's not working anymore. I wonder what I'm working for. So that's my find of the day so far, right there. I've been finding a bunch of round balls too. So a bunch of cool stuff. And now I'm gonna keep plugging around a little bit and then I'm probably gonna head out. So my kids are gonna get off the bus in a little bit. It's almost three. So it's pretty cool. I'm gonna keep on searching. That makes me happy because this might actually be my last hunt of the year because the ground's gonna freeze and with my injured thumb and I just don't know, so that's a really good way to close it out. But if I find anything else, I'll let you know. But that'll probably be my awesome, my last awesome find. Beautiful, isn't it? It's not very big. It's definitely a woman's ring or even a child's ring, but it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I can't see any air marks in it, but I'll have to clean it up. I don't see any hallmarks in it. I don't think it's silver, but boy, it sure looks like silver. It looks real nice, so. Alright, that's going in my pocket. Cool, because the homeowner just came down and talked to me for a little while. I guess he brought me some good luck. So uh, I dug a dime in front of him. He thought that was pretty cool, and then he went back up to his house. And now I just dug a ring. Awesome. So finds today. I found some pretty cool stuff. I found some round balls. I found tons of plaid. Lots of quarters today. Lots and lots of quarters, and they all rang up 87, 86, 87. One of them I think hit 88, so that's cool. The, the one thing I love about this place is that you can find so much here. Um, and, <laughs> but it's not just so much, but you can find so much vast stuff, like a variety of modern and old, and, and uh, semi-old, and iron, and silver, and even some gold, you know? I found everything here, so I think it's pretty cool. So this is like my training ground for my AT Pro, you know? <laughs> so it's pretty awesome. This place has been real good to me. So I just found that ring. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. And I uh, found some round balls. And here I'm walking back up to my car. When I get to my car, I'm going to empty out my, uh, my beeping bag. And I'll show you what I found. All right. Of course, it's a horseshoe. Always find those. Make sure we're still in the picture here. Alrighty, so I'll move that off to the side and empty out our bag here. Yes, sir. One of Sheila's beeping bags. I'll tell you what, I love this thing. It uh, worked out. I'm only working with one thumb here, so bear with me. It worked out really, really well today. This thing is amazing. It's incredible. It's great the way it works and just snaps shut. I absolutely love it. Got it a little dirty, but you can throw it right in the washer and wash it up, she said. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now we got a Model T hubcap, which is pretty cool. And we got quarters, like you wouldn't believe, tons of plaid. Unbelievable amounts of plaid. Lots of aluminum today. There's a shell. Old pocket knife, but it's not too old. It's actually a modern pocket knife that just didn't hold up very well. You see the blades. The blades actually still good. I'd probably make a pocket knife out of that if I wanted to. Lots of uh, what they call carriage bolts. And lots of carriage bolts today. They're uh, bolts from wagons, you know. There's small little bolts and lots of pennies and bullets. There's a bullet right there. More clad. 
motors. Got this little set of, I think they're, uh, yeah, they're plated silver. So just costume driller, but they're actually um, silver slippers. So I thought those were pretty cool. There's a lead button. That was pretty neat. You don't see those very often. It's really heavy. There's a little 22. Smaller than a 22. Look at the size of that thing. It's tiny. Here's a penny. Or a dime, rather. Look how small it is compared to that dime. It's a tiny little bullet. There's good old rod ball right there. It's one of my favorite things to find. I'll clean it up later. But it's definitely, it's oval because it was stuffed down a barrel. But it's definitely fired. It didn't hit anything though. It looks like it just went into the ground. So there's round ball. Unbelievable amounts of clad today. Lots of clad. That's how I know this place has never been hunted. Because I'm finding a lot of easy targets. <clears throat> if it had been hunted before, these targets would be gone. Alright, so there's a raincoat button. It's kind of cool. Otherwise known as a snap. You know, a little snap button. Neat little design on it. So that's good. Lots of aluminum today. Lots of pull tabs. Pull tabs get me excited around here because I found that gold ring that day. Alright, so here's my notable finds. There's a horseshoe down there, but we've got some pretty cool stuff. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Okay. So we got round ball, bullet. I'm missing a round ball. I had two round balls. There it is. It's a pistol round. A little pistol round. And then this ring. So it doesn't get any cooler than that. That's a nice little find right there. I love finding rings. Rings are just like, they get me excited for some reason. That's beautiful. Ornate designs on it. So these are my good ones. These are the ones going in the pocket. all the clad today. Found my little hubcap. So. Not sure I had a really good four hours out here. Found a lot of cool stuff. I just showed you everything I found. But again, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Sheila Badai. Um, S-H-E-L-I-A B-E-D-I. Um, she is an admin. Well, I'm not sure if I should say their name or not because I'm not sure if she uh, correlates them, but if you check it out, she's an admin to a pretty big detecting group online, and you can check it out, and she can tell you in the comments if she wants you to know about that. And uh, But I'm definitely going to push this bag right here. Absolutely love it. The thing works great. It's perfect for what I need. I, oh, I'm just very, very happy. I love how it snaps shut. It's very durable. And I figured out that this is actually a little handle right here, so you can pull it open. <laughs> so thanks again, Chill, for that. And This is Justin Levitt for Vermont Diggers, and uh, well... We'll see you later, all right? So uh, this might be my last hunt for this year. It all depends. So uh, I don't know. Keep digging, I guess. And uh, here's to digging. And uh, dig Vermont. All right? Talk to you later. God bless.